I wonder if super soil has anything to do with the size of this leaf. My loquat. Oh, it's about 20 inches long. I'd say a good 20 inches long. This one might even be longer. This is where my Jerusalem artichokes are growing. And a seed from a loquat ended up over here. Yeah, I'll let her go. Here's the other loquat. But nothing's blooming. And my grass is pretty much all dead, mainly because I'm not watering it. I'm not wasting the water. I'm not wasting the water on a lawn. Not when I can water my fruit trees. But no blossoms yet. There's the other loquat. It's got some good sized leaves on it too, but not like over there. Let's see what's up in the garden. That's mint. That's catnip. No more kitty. Oh, gotta get those in the garbage. I don't want them dropping. I did plant. I did plant some four o'clock seeds. And I planted some honeydew and cucumbers. And the honeydew's alive, the cucumbers are gone. And I've been trying to keep the grapevine cut back. Because if I'm not going to get them, I'm not going to take care of them. I was wondering if maybe they came out over here. The critters can't get to them that easily. We'll find out. Still have some strawberries, not that many. Still haven't done anything with the date palms. And my animal deterrent seems to be working. Because the raccoons came in and tore all of this up. Strawberry. Came in and tore all this up. And there's my Jerusalem artichokes. But look at the morning glories. Oh, look at them. They're so pretty. And the dragon fruit did bloom. I don't know if there's any dragon fruit up there or not. Oh, I think that one needs watering. Deadly nightshade. All the strawberries are gone. Now I know why they say to replant them every three years, because the fifth year they're dead. More strawberries. I think I got four plants that are bearing. This is uh, summer lettuce. I've already saved a whole bunch of seeds. And look at this. I planted corn. I did, I did, I did. And you can tell by the sun. That one gets the most of the sun. And it goes downhill from there because the sun rises on this side and it goes over to that side. Those I planted from seed that I had just soaked overnight and it took them almost two weeks to come up. And so I went and sprouted on a heat pad this corn. I know it's too close together but I'm watering it really well and often and I'm feeding it very well. But these came up in three days with roots on a heat pad. So that kind of threw my schedule off because I figured, oh, it's going to take a week or two. Nope. They came up right away. And I gave a whole bunch of them away because what happened was I just kind of dumped them <laughs> on the heat pad. Don't know how many dozens. But the middle row is the ones that gave me five ears. Little ears. And I pulled them up before they were really full, filled out. The one was filled out, but the other four weren't. So the middle row is the multi-corn. And yeah, they are real close together. But it's amazing what sun can do. And borage. And land-raised radishes. Daikon. All those things mixed up. 
Never did get a blossom from my 99 cent store, Stargazer Lily. And there's my grandma. Well, I haven't done much gardening. I think I'm going to have to feed you through the top. Because it does usually get about 8, 10 feet tall. And on the first one, I planted cucumbers in with the corn. Nope. S didn't do anything. Second one, I planted green beans. But I've got green beans coming up. Can't get to them. But I got green beans. This one was squash that I planted in the barrel. And this one was whatever was in the bottom of the container that I keep my seeds in. So who knows what all's in there. But we got morning glories. And something really likes morning glories, apparently. Well, let's go see what's going on in the rest of the yard. Uh, this poor tree is like three years old. Peach tree from seed. We've got a drop in the face. And it just doesn't have enough leaves to protect the fruit. It was super loaded, as you can tell. And they just slowly died out, dried up. So I went and got these from Timu, little cloth planter bags. I can't reach them over there. I gave it a really good shot of nitrogen. And I don't think it really helped. I'm watering it really well. But hopefully I'll get some peaches that aren't all burnt up. It was funny was the bottom of the tree bloomed, started setting fruit, and then the top of the tree started blooming and setting fruit. So I figured I'd have a big crop over a long period. No, it hasn't done a June drop per se, but it's got a lot of dead fruit, shriveled up fruit. I see anything over here? Just pretty flowers. Compost. I love my compost. Well, I tried air layering. I don't think it worked. Hmm. It went two months and nothing happened. And I apparently didn't cut through the bark enough. Cambian layer. And so I cut some more and scraped some more and I think I overdid it. He's not going to take. But I have a little bit more tree I can try with. And lemon tree, I just, let's see, I tried grafting there. Uh, I don't know why it didn't work. <laughs> I, I didn't know I was supposed to wrap the grafts. I do know now. So next year. And I did pick lemons. So I make my Italian lemon eye. And I have more peach trees from seedlings and I'm just gonna let them go because I'm not really gardening so they're in a raised bed so they might fall over so what and there's the third one and my neighbor commented on how the light shines in her bathroom window so I covered it and here's the little seedling that's only growing in six inches deep of soil because I lined the whole thing with plastic it's trying to hold water I lined the whole thing with plastic is trying to hold water is impossible here in the desert zone 10b and here's the other peach tree from seed and it has one peach on it that I have seen one whole peach now the cherry trees look at that That's the one that I started last fall and transplanted it this spring under the fig tree back there. I should go look and see if I got any edible figs yet. And here's the cherry tree I started two years ago. I even put it in a pretty pot. Chickens found out they like cherry tree leaves. And here are the blue bellies. I did get a handful. Not even enough to bring in to make a blueberry pancake. And the tall one is Misty Blue. And this little one is Biloxi. And because I neglected 
to water them. There's some blues, not that many. Because this thing was literally, literally covered in great big clusters of blueberries. Instead, I'm getting one here and there. To save the plant, because we ended with three, four really heavy rainstorms in the spring when it's full of blossoms, I covered the whole back of the cage with a sheet, the top and the back, so it didn't get blown apart and rained on real hard. Well, the problem with that is I neglected to water it. And, you know, it's raining, so why should I water it? It's raining. Then when I started watering the rest of the yard, the garden, I neglected to water this because I do it with rainwater. So that's how I almost lost everything. And I mean, it was so loaded, I could have made a big blueberry pie. So to solve the problem of me not watering, because I have to get in there, and if the chickens are around, that doesn't work. Because they'll get in there and tear everything up. I stuck PVC pipe in there. And a watering can that had holes in it. See, da, 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 da. And I just pour the water, rainwater into here. And once that one's get two gallon, I come over here and give it two gallons. So I solved that problem. I just have to remember to do it. Because they get rain water. And this is three years now. I didn't plant it. It came up on its own. I got to get out there and do some trimming. It's, it's an okay tomato. It's not that great. But if you don't have any tomatoes, it's a fantastic tomato. And then here, I vaguely, vaguely, vaguely remember taking tomato seeds off of a paper towel that I found in one of the things. So I didn't know how old the tomatoes are or what they were. But I've been eating them. They haven't been, I haven't let, I have not let them completely ripen yet. Eventually, I get tired of them, and I will let them ripen <laughs> instead of eating them. And from the top of the pot to the top of the plants, these were over six feet tall. And I didn't support them well enough, and they fell over. And I think it broke the main vine or yeah, main stem or something. Because one chunk is not happy. Not happy at all, but I got lots of tomatoes. I make lots of salsa, and I can throw them in the freezer and use them later. And they're pretty good tasting. When I first started tasting them, they were kind of mealy on the inside. I went, ooh, don't like those. Yeah, this is the one with the avocado tree on the inside. Oh, dear. Was it raccoons? Hmm. One never knows. And I have to have everything up and up high enough that the chickens don't get in it and trash it. There's that avocado tree. I did get three avocados the first couple of years. And it had bloomed before. But it hasn't bloomed that I noticed since. But I can't see up there either. Oh, that did take a while. It's a little on the heavy side. And I'm old and weak now. I'm so weak. It's ridiculous. And this is kind of new. Let's see. Let's uncover it. That was my big artichoke. Little artichokes. Big plant, little artichokes. And that is... And that is part of the big one. But these are new. I started this one from seed. This one is supposed to have purple artichokes, and my neighbor gave it to me. And this is, I started from seed. 
all those seeds that's all that came up but I will have more artichokes and no I haven't moved the greenhouse yet um, oh that was the other cherry tree yeah I need to move it because I can't get to that to clip it even with my new clippers